we are live. Welcome to She-Hulk episode 2 Thoughts. This episode is called Superhuman Law. So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. And yeah, so we get some clips from new shows. One identifies Titania as an influencer, which makes her an evil influencer, as if there were any other kind. And she gets the name She-Hulk foisted upon her, men trying to shape her identity without her input. And Dennis thinks it's selfish, feels entitled to the explanation. A lot of men feels like if there's something they want to know about a woman, they're entitled to that information. And then he says, there's a hot chick over there, I'm going to go talk to it. He sees her as nothing but an object. And she says the line that was also in the trailer, I'm not a superhero that is for billionaires, narcissists, and adult orphans, for some reason. Which is an excellent line. Ms. Marvel is the only person to still have both her parents. Moon Knight maybe still has his father. Everyone else is an adult orphan. I love that some reactionaries, I believe Critical Drinker was one of them, have pretended like she's saying that to be a superhero you have to be each of those things rather than at least one, maybe two, possibly all three. Critical Drinker also put out a video before he'd watched anything other than clips and trailers acting like he knew what the show would be like based on marketing. It is beyond pathetic. Most of the issues in it were tackled very nicely by Organized Chaos. One thing though... When Critical Drinker whined that he isn't holding his breath for Disney to put out an MCU show that is for straight male viewers who like attractive women and a lot of action, Organized Chaos said that every movie in Phase 1 fits that description. I really don't think he went too far enough there. There is no movie in the MCU that does not deliver for that specific group. Even the ones with female leads, those leads are conventionally attractive. They all have a lot of action. But he doesn't like that they're no longer exclusively led by straight white cis men. I challenge anyone to point to an MCU movie that does not deliver on those things. And honestly, all of the Disney Plus MCU shows so far also deliver those things. Attractive women and action. Not all of them are overflowing with those two, but all of them feature at least some, although I suppose it's possible that he doesn't think that a woman is attractive if she isn't turned into a sex object. For sure, some of them don't do that. And yeah, so that's for the Disney Plus shows. I cannot speak to the Netflix shows other than season one of Daredevil, which does feature both. I haven't watched them yet or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Also, it is hysterical how Critical Drinker makes such a big deal out of these supposedly desperate 30-something women that the show is by, about, and for when he himself comes across as incredibly desperate. Like, right now his big thing is going on YouTube doing reactionary videos about movies and shows that, let's be honest, are largely, not all of them, made for teenagers. The fact that a lot of people watch and enjoy his content doesn't make it better, it just makes that audience more sad. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with still enjoying these into your 30s and later still, but getting so upset about them that you make so many videos talking about how bad they are, other than talking about Disney's bad practices when it comes to their employees. Dude, get a life. So, back to the notes specifically for this episode. So, she's fired for something out of her control and because of how she is perceived by others. Which, again, happens to a lot of women. And we get a really cool intro and it says, Attorney for Hire instead of Attorney at Law. So I'm wondering if maybe by the end of this entire miniseries, you know, the the intro the intro will have, or I mean, this one did have it, but it then changed into a turning fire. Maybe by the end of the final, uh, maybe by the start of the final episode, or actually maybe by the end, it will just say attorney at law. I mean, I would not rule out that she might leave. The, I, I don't remember the uh, initials, uh, which I feel bad about because they're apparently the initials of like, so one of them is L for Lieberman, or which is Stan Lee's original name, and one is K for Kirby, I'm afraid I don't remember his original name, but yeah, you know, they're, they're comic book legends that helped create a uh, yeah. And we get a montage of no one hiring her, and she goes to progressively worse 
offices, you know, they get more and more, like, bad looking, and even the worst looking is still not hiring her. And she goes to an exhausting family dinner, which is also, like, nobody likes the, the family dinner, but I have heard that it is worse for women you know, you have the, the judgment of where are, you know, can't, can't you give me some grandkids and, you know, are you sure about the guy that you're with and, and stuff like that. And yeah, obviously worse if you're trans and or not straight. So yeah, you know, then they're going to try to talk you out of, yeah, criticize you for being trans, try to talk you into being straight as if it's just a choice. You know, uh, who was it? I think it was maybe Cenk on the, the Young Turks who recently pointed out straight people who say that being gay is just a choice. I mean, they must themselves have made the choice to be straight, which implies that some part of them feels a desire towards not being straight you know it's not and and that's not really that's, that's just choosing to not live your truth not being who you are that you know that's not a good thing it's like if you choose to not go drinking the night before a important exam or something that's a choice that's a that you know that's you thinking things through but not living with the the, the way that you want to, you know, the the way that's natural to you, it's, yeah. And and don't get me started on the, the natural fallacy. There's plenty of gayness in animal. What's the term? Animal kingdom. I'm okay with not being okay. If you're not okay, that's okay. And Jen rambles a little, and talking to her dad helps. See, not every man on the show is terrible and worthless. And that is also something that I hear, you know, again, I, I, I've never lived as a woman. I'm a cis man, so I can't speak to, but I hear that, like, the relationship to their father is extremely important for women. You know, there, there's that thing of, I, I don't know if that's a stereotype of that's still considered, but, but, this thing of, you know, the, a woman's relationship to her father has a lot, to, you know, kind of sets the stage for her relationships to men for the rest of her life. And, yeah, you know, she is successful. This this last, you know, cu currently, Jen is not the most successful, but that's not her fault. You know, like the... Like, literally, what was she supposed to do? Let the jury die? That's absurd. Yeah. You know, the, they would definitely... Some of them would have gotten hurt. I'm certain some of them would have died. That, you know, wooden table thrown right at them. There's nothing they can cover with. There's no... You know, the... Maybe, maybe the ones at the front can, like, duck. But a lot of them are not able to duck. And they didn't look like they were ready to dodge out of the way. Which I can't blame them for. Now, but, but yeah, you know, she has, she, she went through law school and yeah, you know, she, she is successful. So it does make sense that her relationship, we don't, we don't see a lot of how she relates to her mother in this episode, but certainly her relationship to her father seems to be good overall, though he can sometimes be frustrating. I, I quite like that, you know, last episode they were talking about, is Captain America a virgin? This time they talk about, do they get paid? Which, according to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, no. Which is messed up, because Tony is really incredibly rich. It's, yeah. I mean, it would make sense to treat them as employers. Anyway, the the... Yeah, you know, in this one they talk about, does Hawkeye pick up the arrows after he's fired them? Because they could be dangerous to people. And, yeah, you know, that's a that's a good point. And that is something we don't really think about when we're just watching him kick ass, you know. And the, um, uh, there was some, uh, yeah, 
she points out, do the Avengers get health care and, and all this stuff, you know. I really appreciate they're actually this is this is an actual issue. She is talking about, I mean, I could choose this job or I could choose this job. I have to make the choice in part by where am I going to get health care? You know, she realizes she's not necessarily good at, like hypothetically, if she if something happened to her, she could probably pay at least some of the way, you know, lawyers do make a lot of money. But even she is concerned, you know, eventually I might not be able to afford it, and then what? You know, so she needs to choose a job in part by that metric, and that's, no one should have to. You shouldn't be forced to work a job you don't love, you know, because of, it. yeah. So, you know, hopefully progressives will be able to make that happen you know universal health care but yeah but yeah i <laughs> i would love it if i believed that disney were like 100% behind this instead of just you know it, they they know that a lot of young people who are going to watch the show are progressive so they you know they know that if they spout their own conservative values it's going to be negatively received by a lot of people so yeah i would i would love it if they put their money where their mouth is but at least their mouth is in the right place that sounded dirty and yeah so jen is hired for the new division and she finds out she has to be she hulk on the job and one guy like bumps into something and drops documents staring at her and it's you know and apparently in the comic it was exactly the opposite she was not allowed to change into she hulk when on the job but you know, yeah, she is part of the reason she got the job is that, you know, I said, I, I mean, essentially it is like a minority hire, a diversity hire. You know, there's not very many people with superpowers that have day to day jobs, which was something, you know, Smart Hulk pointed out last episode. You know, when you have superpowers, you have to be a superhero. You know, and yeah, so they, they in part of the, you know, they didn't hire someone not qualified. I'm really glad that the, you know, the show does make that point. She wasn't hired just, you know, they, they didn't go and hire like, I mean, I like Hawkeye. I think he's, he's smart and tactical, but I'm not sure he would make a good lawyer. I'm, I'm quite certain he hasn't gone through law school. You know, they did hire an actual lawyer. But yeah, part of it is the the diversity, and they want to emphasize that. And again, it's not really her choice. It's not she doesn't really get agency in this. They just tell her you have to be She Hulk. That's part of the job now, of of this job. If you want to work here, you have to be She Hulk. We want to, you know, signpost that the the you know this is a place where, you know, we hire you know he he says superhuman law division you're going to be the face of it you know and that's not really something that yeah you know she she didn't realize that they would ex that they expected her to be she hulk i forget if i think he might have said superhuman law in the i think it was in the bar that he approached her and gave her the offer i i'm not 100% certain but she didn't he didn't tell her that she had to be She-Hulk before she arrived at the office. You know, what's she going to do? Turn around and walk away? I really like the fourth wall breaks as she walks to the office. Uh, who was it? I want to say it was maybe the, the Ponderer. I'm just really quick. Yeah, the Ponderer pointed out that this is, you know, this is very in character. She is basically venting. And she's actually missing potentially important information that her new boss is telling her by breaking the fourth. You know, she she didn't like listen to what he said and then go to the bathroom and then break the fourth wall. No, she's, you know, he's telling her stuff and she's ignoring him to, yeah. In in general, the Ponderous video, uh, She Hulk: The Dangers of Celebrity Superheroes is well worth watching. I think it was also he who pointed out that she's 
talking to to us and we can't respond to her and that was you know that's important to note that is a really nice office okay desk is normal but it's a fancy desk and she's told the first case will be Emil Blonsky and then she has to take the case taking advantage of her having no other prospects and you know taking you know he's abusing the power dynamic she can't really, like, let's say that she refused. Let's say that she just straight up, and even, what, what was it, you have until the end of the day to make your decision. Uh, you know, let's say that she refused and she left. The, you know, he's he's he could talk to the press. He could write a really negative, uh, what, are they called references when you when it's negative? I, I'm, you know, so so that the next place she works, they can see. Oh wow, you you were supposed to work for this really prestigious company, and they have nothing but bad words to, to say. It's, oh wow, you quit on the first day, you know. So yeah, and you know, as as she's walking towards Emil, you know, she's being told all these things, and she ends up straight up making. A reference to the sounds of the lambs because it really is like wow this is this is the sounds of the lambs did not expect them to get sympathy for a meal but it worked as long as we don't have to listen to his haikus I have no problem with haikus in general but you know yeah the show is making clear we're supposed to think his are really off you know she's not there for that she's there to, to work out what their defense is gonna be let's see. And he mentions having seven soulmates that he met through the prison pen pal system and that they bought some land for him to live on. That is definitely Thunderbolts. And, you know, that's part of the reason he wants out. Because we already know that it's not that he doesn't get to punch people anymore. Uh, you know, Wong expects him, w wants him to pull his punches, but he still, you know, he gets to be part of this, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Underground fighting tournament. You know, he he gets to show off, which is one of the things that, you know, he he once he had these the Hulk powers, he was showing off at first. You know, he wasn't he didn't have a specific goal in mind. He's not like I'm gonna go, you know, beat up this particular guy. No, he just starts breaking stuff around him. You know, you know he only starts fighting the military once they attack him. Before that, he's just like smashing stuff in in Harlem you know so yeah it's not that he's not getting to work out that kind of stuff but yeah he's he wants out so he can be a member of the Thunderbolts which you know he would be their Hulk equivalent which is really great I, I hope that they you know I know he's getting on in years but he, you know, he, he reminds us in this, you know, I, I know not everybody likes that he was cast. In part because of the thing, like, in the comics, he's, like, Russian, and he's supposed to have a Russian accent, and then they hired, you know, because he's a really, really good actor. And they were like, just, just use your natural British accent, you know. Yeah, I, I do think he's great in The Incredible Hulk, which I really think is underrated in general of the MCU movies, but... In this episode, he really gets to show he's he's a good at like this guy killed people, you know. He's a, like like innocent people. I mean, not I'm not talking about his military service where there's a chance he was killing, you know, bad people. No, he he went around, you know. I realize we don't see it that much, but it's a PG-13 movie. They're not going to show that many deaths. There's no way <clears throat> that he did not kill people on his rampage through Harlem. You know, so, but yeah, you know, he, he's talking about, you know, I, I thought I was going to be Captain Bloody America. And yeah, the, the government took advantage of him, took advantage of, you know, he believed in them. He thought they were going to, yeah, I, very, very impressive. And Jen calls Bruce and, you know, she's basically... She she has already made the decision, and she's basically just trying to tell him, but she's trying to break it gently. She's trying to make it sound 
like it's like like he had a say in the matter, which honestly he did. I mean, he'll live, you know. He's survived worse things than that. She really needs this job, so yeah. I was a different person, literally. Which is both a cute nod at the actor recasting, and it's also that he used to be regular Hulk, now he's smart Hulk. Yeah, very self-aware show. And meanwhile, he's on the Sakaran spaceship. Holy crap, we might actually get Planet Hulk soon. And yeah, you know, multiple people have theorized. I was a new rock star's planet. Blah. Among others. Bilingual. I accidentally switched to Danish there. I believe it was New Rockstars who said he's, you know, he's maybe headed to Sakaar and we're actually going to get, yeah, that's going to be amazing. I, I will admit I did not read Planet Hulk until I heard that that was a story they would be taking some elements from, at least not really adapting, for Thor Ragnarok. I have issues with Thor Ragnarok and one of them is... I really feel like they should have just chosen a different... If, if they're going to take so little of the stuff that's interesting... Like, there's almost nothing from the story in the movie. And it's such an interesting story. Just, yeah. Um, I guess... Let's see. Yeah, like, imagine if the... the uh, I guess that's a... Spoiler. Yeah, I'm not sure I have a good MCU example. Moving on. But but yeah, that was a, a cool and and like he f you know he doesn't even properly say goodbye or hang up. It just goes through a wormhole to like yeah and and she's like I guess the call is over. <laughs> she has no idea that on the other I they're they're making good use of contrast to to make stuff funny in this show so far and. <laughs> You know, she calls her boss. It's like, I'll I'll take it, and I have a great plan. You know, you're gonna see my best work. You know, confidence. Confidence is usually a good thing. But then he says, "That's great. Turn on the news. Bye." And hangs up. And there's a leaked video of the Fight Club, which is quite the complication. Does that mean that so far the show has been happening? Like, before, like, I guess during the first chunk of Shang-Chi, not, not the far in the past stuff, obviously, but the present day stuff. I mean, that, yeah, that works. We didn't see Hulk in that until the post credit scene, so, which, does that mean that he's back in time for the post credit scene? I guess the post credit scene could be set sometime in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure they have everything quite planned out, but it's fine. Great post credit scene of her helping out the family with her super strength and like, you know, Dad, I'm glad you're hydrating, but I think you might be overdoing it. And that's, that's a thing. Like, fathers will really like, they'll, they'll get an idea in their head, and it might be a good idea, and then they'll way overdo it. Like, you know, I uh, we should be early for the airport, so I'm leaving a day before the the flight is taking place. You know, and yeah, uh, I don't know if hydration is specific. Yeah, I could imagine that probably is because because her father is like middle aged, kind of yeah, and and yeah, he's probably heard some kind. You know, oh, once you get that age. It's extremely important to hydrate. Oh, I better buy, you know, what What was that, like six or eight of these, uh, you know, I guess water cooler can, can flasks, whatever. This episode was even better than the first one. I continue to love all Disney Plus MCU episodes. I forgot to mention last week, but I love that the ending credits use those court drawings. That's a great stylistic choice. Fits perfectly. You know, they're they're they've done such a great job on those in these Disney Plus MCU shows. Just yeah. And I believe that's everything I had to say for this episode. But yeah, absolutely loved it. I 
the the um, I hope I'm really excited to see what you know. Okay, so obviously Wong is gonna be you know that's how we get the we do this by the book the book of Ashanti no the book of American law because you know and and it is like Wong is probably used to playing fast and loose with the law he probably knew that what he was doing was illegal but it's like I mean is is much of anything that the magicians do completely legal like do they have to fill out paperwork after a fight in the streets like they're cops like he's probably pretty used to just yeah you know and it is that thing like in all of these movies, they haven't really, the, like, the main characters don't really think that much about legal consequences, you know. It was a twist when, uh, what, was that damage control? Yeah, that was, I, I think that is damage control. In, in Homecoming, you know, it was a surprise to everyone except Tony when the, Sokovia Accords were presented to the Avengers, you know, they haven't really thought about these things until the consequences arrive, and Wong wasn't part of that, you know, he hasn't had much contact with the Avengers, and certainly didn't back then, you know, the first time he met an Avenger was Infinity War, where the, you know, considering that uh, Thor would not Thor. Doctor Strange was not a... Yeah, because he, he didn't meet Thor for Ragnarok, did he? I don't think... That was probably only Doctor Strange that interacted with... Because we technically don't see every second, but it seemed like Doctor Strange had things under control. Wong was probably in another... Yeah. You know, he, he has not had much contact with them and Infinity War that's supposed to be like five years after the Sokovia Accords were introduced and pop probably long after they were passed so yeah he's he's really not used to having to do things by the book other than the book of Ashanti so yeah I I this is such a this is such a fun show I really really like that I mean they keep they keep thinking of different parts of the MCU to show different different perspectives on what happens in the MCU. You know, Eternals also had them, you know, they're like casually talking about like, who's going to lead the Avengers now with, you know, which was a, a question that essentially, you know, that's, that's something you could ask at the end of Endgame, but it, you know, yeah, that movie had so many things to wrap up. But yeah, the legal side of the MCU, legal consequences for the superheroics, you know. I also admire they they it has not been boring so far, which, you know, that when is law stuff stuff not boring? On TV, that's where. And that is it for this week. So catch you next time.